In this hands-on lab, I will show you the step-by-step -step process of creating your personal AWS account. This task is fairly easy, but you still have to be aware of certain things that you should keep an eye on while you register. You basically need to prepare for things. Your personal email address, credit card, custom AWS account name, and lastly, your mobile phone. The email address that you'll provide here will be used for email notifications and for setting your account credentials in case you have forgotten your password. This will be the email of the root user of your AWS account, which has all the administrative permissions. Please avoid using your corporate email if you're creating a personal AWS account for yourself. Remember that your company has access to your corporate email, so technically, they can access your AWS account even when you have left the company. Nonetheless, you still have the option to update the email address associated with your AWS account in the Billing and Cost Management Console. For the second one, please make sure that your credit card is not expired and you know the correct billing address associated with your card. If you don't have a credit card, you can just use a regular debit card. The current residential address that you'll enter in the AWS Contact Information Registration step can be different from the billing address of your credit card or debit card. In this demo, I will show you the actual AWS signup page where you have to enter your personal and billing details. For the AWS account name, you can basically add any name that you prefer. You can also consider using the naming standard of first name dash last name dash purpose. For example, my first name is John and my last name is Bonzo. And the AWS account that I will create is just for testing. So in this case, I will input John dash Bonzo dash test account upon registration. Again, this is just a user defined custom name that you can choose. So you can technically use any name that you want. Take note that you can change the AWS account name in your account settings after you sign up. For the last one, be sure that your mobile phone is ready since you'll receive a text-based verification code as part of the account registration process. All right then, let's create your first AWS account. To start off, open up your favorite web browser and prepare the specific email that you'll be using. After the account registration, you will see several AWS email confirmations, which indicate whether you have successfully created your account. Go to the official AWS website at aws.amazon.com. You will see two buttons, Get Started for a Free button or the Create an AWS Account. You can choose any of these two buttons to navigate to the sign up page. I'll select Get Started for a Free button here. And shortly afterward, I am now redirected to this AWS free tier page. If you click this Create a Free Account button, you'll also be directed to the exact same Create an AWS Account link that you saw on the previous page. You'll see this Sign Up page for AWS Registration Wizard, which has a total of five steps. In this first step, enter your personal email address, password, and your chosen AWS account name. Once again, the email address that you'll enter here will be the root user email of your AWS account. As usual, your password must be at least eight characters long and contain at least three uppercase letters, lowercase letters, numbers, and non-alphanumeric characters. For this particular account, I'll set my AWS account name to Tutorials Dojo. You can set this to your name or to any custom name that you want. If you have your own startup, you put the name of your own business here. You'll also see several security checks in the course of your registration. Just type the characters that you see in the image and move on. In the second step, you'll have to provide your contact information and phone number. In the how do you plan to use AWS question, just select personal if this account is intended for your personal use. Otherwise, you can select the business option. Next, enter your full name, country, phone number, address, your current state or province, and your postal code. 
the address that you enter here can be your present residential address, your credit card billing address, or any address that will show up in your account. Then, select Continue. For the third step, this is where you will enter your credit card or debit card information. Make sure that the expiration date and the cardholder's name details are accurate. For the billing address, you can use the contact address that you've entered on the previous step, or enter a new address if your card billing address is different from your residential address. If the residential address is the same as your billing address, then just select Use my contact address. In my case, my card is issued from another country and is different from the address that I entered in the previous step. So, I'll select Use a new address. Just a gentle reminder to double check your billing details here, as your card might be denied if you entered the wrong country or address. Like the previous step, you'll have to enter your full name, phone number, country, address, city, and other details. After that, just click the Verify and Continue button. In this fourth step, you'll have to confirm your identity using your phone. It asks for your country and mobile phone number. You simply have to enter your contact number here, and in this field, don't include the country code since it is already covered in the field above it. You'll also have to do a security check by typing the fuzzy characters that you see on your screen. Click this Send SMS button and wait for a few seconds for the SMS message to be sent to your phone. Once you get your verification code, enter it here and click Continue. This will direct you to the fifth and final step in the wizard, which is all about choosing a support plan. You can select basic support, developer support, or business support depending on your needs. Take note that the developer and business support are paid plans and you should only use this if you have production workloads in AWS. Otherwise, you'll be billed every month unnecessarily. If this AWS account is for your personal use, Choose the free basic support, and finally, click Complete Signup. And congratulations! You have successfully created your own AWS account. To start using AWS, click the Go to the AWS Management Console button. You'll be redirected to the AWS login page. Here, you have two options, sign in as a root user or an IAM user. Select Root User and enter the email address that you have previously used in the registration process and hit Next. The AWS sign-in process employs strict login security, so you may randomly get this CAPTCHA security check. Just like before, you simply have to enter the characters that you see on your screen. If you're having difficulty reading these fuzzy characters, you can click the Refresh button to generate another image and try again. Alternatively, you can also click this audio icon here. This will play an audio recording that contains a series of numbers with a weird noise in the background. Once done, click Submit and enter your password to sign in. The window that you're seeing right now is called the AWS Management Console. This is where you can launch different AWS resources using your browser. On the upper left-hand corner, you'll be able to see a list of available AWS services. The search box in the middle is actually a unified search box that allows you to search various services, features, documentations, and marketplace products in AWS. And on the upper right-hand corner, you will see the specific AWS region that you're currently in. So right now, I am in the Ohio region, but I can select a different AWS region if I want to. If you check your inbox, you'll also see several emails from AWS. You'll get an AWS support sign-up confirmation, 
an email that notifies you if your AWS account is ready, and a welcome email from Amazon Web Services. In our succeeding hands-on labs, we will use the AWS Management Console to launch virtual servers, containers, databases, serverless stack, and many other resources.